to us, or what used to be the farm, and the companies were all the way around the landing zone and in contact with, with the enemy. So w when the Polish gliders came in, the, they met the, re the re withdrawing 10th Battalion coming across in the middle. The uh, Germans on the far side shot at the gliders and there were battles with the King's Own Scottish borders. The, the jeeps, the, sorry, the, the Poles who got out of the gliders which did crash didn't know what was happening. There were Germans, there were British, they fired at everybody. There was bloody chaos down there. There was a German armoured car driving around shooting into the gliders to shoot them up. Our own medical officer came out from his regimental aid, uh, aid post up here in a carrier and he uh, drove around to the gliders to try and get some of the casualties out. And as you do, the Poles didn't know who was British, they didn't speak English, and we didn't speak Polish. So there was utter chaos. And the 10th Battalion lost half their men coming across the landing zone, hotly pursued by the enemy. <laughs> and um, so the 156 came back down this track and across here, making for the railway. Uh, in some haste, and the German armour came through the woods and could fire on them from here. And they got down along the railway, and about halfway along, as I said before, an order was passed uh, to the level crossing is held across the railway. And as I said before, that order did not reach half a tenth battalion or half of 156 battalion. So half got over the, the railway, half went to Balfesa. So that night, the other side of the railway, the, what was left of the brigade concentrated about 270 men of 156, 10 battalion, and about 80 or 100 of brigade in quarters, the engineer squadron, <coughs> and the field ambulance. Okay. Right, I, I left you at the last stand with the brigade withdrawing back down along the railway or over the railway. Half of them, if you remember, going on to the level crossing where they all got mopped up during the next two days. So half the brigade got over the railway and uh, concentrated by battalions and units just this side of the railway. And as I said, the brigadier wanted to move through these woods here at night to get into Oosterbeck to join the rest of the division, but that was refused. So the next morning, no, very early next morning, the, what was left of the brigade set off to move through these uh, Wolfhazer woods. And they started off coming up a long track, which I, I think most of you will know called the Breda Line. And by that time, the Germans had moved in uh, practically on three sides, through the woods from this side, over the railway, and uh, over from the Wolfhazer direction. So as the uh, brigade came up along the Breda line, they were attacked from both sides, and they <coughs> sustained casualties coming up. The leading battalion, 156, got up very nearly to where the Breda line joins the is awake, but that was held by the enemy. And sadly, this is where the border regiment made two mistakes. First of all, they withdrew a company from the level crossing too soon. They did have a company down at the road junction where the Bredelan joins the Valfazo, uh, and they withdrew that too soon. But by the time 156 arrived, it was <coughs> held by the enemy, and they had um, uh, quite a strong battle, uh, but failed to get through. So the brigadier gave orders to change direction and come in this direction. And the whole time, they were being harried on all sides by infantry and by armored cars, suffering casualties the whole time. Now, as you can appreciate, fighting in woods 
is difficult. And remember that we, there was more leaf on the trees then. You get fired on from the left, you send a party of men over to, to deal with them on the left. You get fired on from the right, so you go there, you, you lose touch with those men, you lose touch with those men, and then you press on in the center. So you get involved in a series of small battles all the way up, and losing men, until eventually the 10th Battalion broke through and got through on the road behind you into the, what was forming uh, as a perimeter. 156 Brigade headquarters were about 150 yards down there, surrounded by enemy infantry and armoured cars. And the last of the, the jeeps were, were destroyed there. So the Brigadier got hold of uh, Major Jeffrey Powell was one of our company commanders, and he brought him to a point about 50 yards through there. And these, this was quite open in those days. And he said to Jeffrey, and he pointed to what is called the hollow, where you see those young trees there. There was a, an open hollow there. And he said, you see, Jeffrey, that hollow, it's full of Bosch. Now drive the buggers out and occupy it. And Jeffrey Powell got about 20 of his men and literally charged. And they charged screaming and yelling and the Germans fled. So he and the remnants of the brigade, about 250 men, got into the hollow. And there for the next four or five hours, they had to make a stand, surrounded on all sides by the enemy, sometimes being attacked by armoured cars, but mostly suffering casualties from snipers or from rifle fire. Until about five o'clock in the afternoon, uh, they lost about half the strength. There were about 150 men left in the hollow. And the Brigadier collected some of the few surviving officers and at the far end of the hollow where it meets the where it's almost on the road well when you pass it you'll see a, a pillar a marker post as a memorial and he got his remaining officers there and he said right collect all the able men that you have that are left uh, in this corner of the hollow and when I give the order, go, we will go out with one mad rush. He himself, our brigadier, went round the hollow and said goodbye to the wounded that had to be left. And of course, many did. And he came back and he gave the order, go, and in one wild rush, they crossed the road and up a track which you can't see from here, and ran for about 150 yards. And then about 100 yards ahead of them, they met the neatly dug positions of the border regiment, with every man complete with his uniform equipment. The 4th Brigade, mostly carrying German weapons, just in smocks, and bloodstained with bandages, and the young captain went up to Geoffrey Powell and said, will you get your filthy shower out of my company area? <laughs> At any rate, he collected them and <clears throat> Chan Hackett went down to the Hartenstein to HQ to report for orders. And the remnants of 10th Battalion and 156, they went down to the Hartenstein and then they were issued with new weapons and ammunition and given a few ration packs and told you've got one hour's rest and you will occupy houses to the north of the main road, which where the battalion fought for another five days uh, until the end of the battle and the final withdrawal. And 